Clint Eastwood, who was subjected to terrible psychological suffering by the harshness of Hollywood, has just revealed the tragic events of his life. At the age of 93, Clint still cannot bravely look back at his painful past from the aspects of family to career and even the misunderstandings of the media. In this video, we will tell you all the troubles that Clint had to face and his life after the tragedy. Let's get started now. Clint Eastwood, the iconic actor and filmmaker, was born in 1930 during the Great Depression to his parents, Clinton and Ruth Eastwood. Despite the challenging economic times, the Eastwood family was financially stable. However, they had their share of difficulties during this era. Clinton Sr., Clint's father, had a job that demanded frequent relocations, which meant that the family had to adapt to an unsettled lifestyle for a significant part of Clint's early years. Young Clint Eastwood had to endure the consequence of these relocations. He attended as many as ten different schools during his childhood, which undoubtedly made it challenging for him to establish lasting connections with peers. Nevertheless, Clint didn't complain about these frequent moves. His father instilled in him a strong work ethic and the belief that you don't get something for nothing, a principle that Clint would carry with him throughout his life. Clint Eastwood's shyness was another aspect of his early life. He was a reserved and introverted child, making it difficult for him to open up to his peers. This shyness persisted until he was coerced into participating in a school play. While the experience initially terrified him, it turned out to be a transformative moment in his life. The school play helped him overcome his shyness, and it marked the beginning of his journey towards becoming the charismatic and confident performer and director the world would come to know. Clint Eastwood's attitude toward academics, as described in Patrick McGilligan's book, Clint, The Life and Legend, was far from enthusiastic. Much like his father's approach to education, his father, Clinton Sr., was perceived by many as kind of intellectually lazy. Despite his talents as a football player, which were substantial enough for him to play for Berkeley, he didn't invest his full dedication into his studies. According to family friends, Clint Sr. failed to take his academic opportunities seriously, ultimately leading to his dropping out in his first year of college. Clint Eastwood followed a similar path during his own childhood. His academic performance was less than stellar, resulting in his enrollment in summer school to catch up with his peers. His grades were so poor that school officials made the decision to have him repeat a grade in the hopes of helping him improve. However, even in high school, Eastwood had a reputation as a troublemaker. His delinquent behavior eventually led to his expulsion from school. One notable incident shared by his mother, Ruth Eastwood, sheds light on Clint's rebellious tendencies. She recounted how he not only wrote an obscene suggestion to a school official on an athletic field scorecard, but also went as far as to bury someone in effigy on the school lawn. These actions reflect his defiance against the conventional school system and his disinterest in traditional education. Then, a young Clint Eastwood was in for a surprise when he was drafted into the U.S. Army during the Korean War. At one point during his time in the Army, Eastwood was on a plane back to San Francisco with an Air Force pilot friend of his when the aircraft malfunctioned and ultimately crashed. As Eastwood told The Hollywood Reporter, he nearly lost his life during the incident. He said, What was going through my mind was just a stark fear, a stark terror, because in the first place, I didn't know anything about aviation at that particular time. I was just hopping a ride. After they made a water landing, Eastwood and the others had to swim to safety. It was a traumatic experience overall. He also revealed to the Hollywood Reporter that the place the plane went down was a known habitat for great white sharks. Luckily, Eastwood didn't find out until much later. As he said, I'm glad I didn't know that at the time or I'd have just died. Clint Eastwood's journey to stardom was far from smooth, and he faced numerous challenges as he pursued a career in the entertainment industry. When he first embarked on his acting career, he struggled to secure roles and recognition. His initial foray into acting was in the film Revenge of the Creature, a sequel to The Creature from the Black Lagoon. 
However, his first role in this movie wasn't even credited, and he played the role of an unassuming lab technician. After this uncredited role, Eastwood continued to take on minor parts in various films, all while trying to make ends meet. To support himself financially, he had to take on multiple odd jobs. He revealed that he worked at a Texaco station located next to General Service Studios on Santa Monica Boulevard. Additionally, he managed an apartment complex where he lived, and this arrangement helped him lower his living expenses. Despite his determination and hard work, Eastwood faced a significant setback when Universal Studios decided to drop his contract. This happened just a year and a half after he had started working with them. Eastwood recalled that the studio's decision was blunt, with them essentially saying that he was a total failure and that they couldn't use him. This experience was undoubtedly a major blow to Eastwood, who was striving to secure more significant and meaningful acting roles. Clint Eastwood grappled with mental health challenges, particularly severe anxiety, during the early days of his acting career. One of his most vivid memories related to this struggle was from his first ever role in the 1955 film Revenge of the Creature. While his role in the movie wasn't pivotal, Eastwood found himself facing immense pressure, trying to adapt to his dialogue and muster the confidence required for the task at hand. During the filming of Revenge of the Creature, Eastwood's anxiety came to the forefront when he witnessed a heated argument between the film's director and producer regarding a line that he was supposed to deliver. The experience left a lasting impact on him as he recalled. The director stood there and just chewed me out put me down something awful, and I was a nervous wreck anyway at the time. So that was my first experience and probably my last for a couple of months. This early setback only exacerbated the anxiety that Eastwood was already grappling with. However, Eastwood's struggles with anxiety didn't end with his early career. In the 1970s, while working on the film Joe Kidd, he faced another severe bout of anxiety, this time exacerbated by a bronchial infection. The situation became so dire that Eastwood felt as though he was on the brink of death during those moments. In the 1970s, Clint Eastwood faced a significant and deeply personal setback when he lost his father to a heart attack. This heart-wrenching event, detailed in the book Clint, The Life and Legend, by Patrick McGilligan, took place in July 1970. Clint's father, Clint Eastwood Sr., had been preparing to play a game of golf, but never made it downstairs. His wife, Ruth, went to check on him and discovered him in his final moments. Tragically, there was nothing she could do to save her husband, who was just 64 years old at the time. The loss of his father was especially difficult for Clint and his family, as they had witnessed Clint Sr.'s father, Clint's grandfather, living until his 90s. The abrupt loss of his father had a profound impact on Clint. It prompted him to make significant changes in his own life, particularly in his approach to health, nutrition, and exercise. He began taking his health more seriously, recognizing the importance of maintaining his well-being. Film producer Fritz Mainz, who knew Clint Eastwood well, revealed that his father's death had a profound impact on the actor. Clint struggled to come to terms with the loss, and he found it challenging to understand why this had happened. Mainz noted that it was a deeply personal and emotional experience for Clint, something that he felt had been done to him. Clint Eastwood also faced significant controversy when he directed the film American Sniper. The film came under fire from some viewers who believed it glorified war. The criticism and debate around the movie were quite intense. Eastwood, in response to the criticisms, made efforts to defend his film in various interviews, but his explanations didn't necessarily sway his critics. He emphasized that the film had nothing to do with any political party or agenda, and he sought to portray the experiences of professional soldiers, Navy personnel, and others who serve for specific reasons. Essentially, Eastwood's aim was to depict the realities of those who make the difficult choice to go to war. 
One of the key points of contention was the portrayal of the sharpshooter Chris Kyle, who was the central character in American Sniper and was played by Bradley Cooper. Kyle had expressed extremist views, such as referring to the enemy as savages and despicably evil. This led some audiences to believe that the film celebrated Kyle's views. Eastwood vehemently argued that the film's vision was misunderstood. He asserted that he, himself, was against war and did not support violence. He stressed the importance of careful consideration when it comes to matters of war and conflict emphasizing that self-protection is crucial for nations. However, he made it clear that he didn't like to see war and violence. Despite the controversy and differing interpretations of the film's message, Eastwood's intent was to shed light on the complexities and sacrifices involved in military service, rather than promote any particular political or ideological stance. From another perspective, Clint Eastwood has gained a notorious reputation for his involvement in multiple relationships throughout his life, which has been a subject of interest and scrutiny. His romantic life has been marked by several significant affairs and fathering children with different women. One of the early notable relationships in Eastwood's life was an affair with a stuntwoman named Roxana Tunis in the early 1960s. This affair resulted in the birth of their daughter, Kimber. Eastwood's personal life became even more complex over the years as he fathered a total of eight children with different women. One aspect of Eastwood's personal life that garnered attention was his seeming inability to maintain stable relationships. For example, during his time with actor and director Sandra Locke, he was simultaneously married to his wife, Maggie with whom he had been in a long-term relationship spanning two decades. This overlap of romantic interests created controversy and raised questions about Eastwood's approach to personal relationships. The pattern of overlapping relationships continued when Eastwood began seeing actor Francis Fisher while still involved with Locke. Similarly, he dated Dina Ruiz while in a relationship with Fisher. This series of overlapping relationships and complicated dynamics contributed to the public's fascination with Eastwood's personal life. Furthermore, Eastwood has been known for his reserved and guarded nature, even with some of his closest friends. Film producer Lily Zanuck described him as a person who embodies what others project onto him. She noted that the man you meet is a combination of his on-screen persona and his true self, but with greater depth. In 1975, Clint Eastwood faced a deeply tragic event while filming his movie, The Iger Sanction. During the production, a devastating accident occurred, resulting in the loss of a life and severe injuries to another crew member. Eastwood was confronted with a difficult decision, but ultimately chose to continue with the film. The incident involved experienced mountain climber David Knowles, who was working as a stunt double in the film. The film crew required additional shots for a particular sequence, and Knowles, along with another mountain climber named Mike Hoover, undertook the task. They managed to capture the necessary shots, but what followed was a horrifying turn of events. A boulder suddenly became dislodged and struck them while they were on a ledge. Tragically, this unexpected accident led to a fracture for Mike Hoover and devastatingly resulted in the death of David Knowles. The aftermath of the accident was described as surreal and nightmarish by one of the other climbers who recounted arriving at the same location where they had been staging the scene for two days, only to find David Knowles hanging lifeless on the end of a rope. It was a collision of fantasy and reality that was profoundly disturbing. Clint Eastwood was profoundly affected by the tragedy and initially contemplated canceling the entire project. The weight of the incident and the loss of a crew member weighed heavily on him. However, his team ultimately convinced him to persevere and finish the movie, acknowledging the dedication and hard work of the entire cast and crew. The Iger Sanction, when it was eventually released in theaters, received mixed reviews, but it will forever be marked by the tragic accident that occurred during its production. It has not stopped there. 
Clint Eastwood's life has been marked by complexity and, at times, chaos due to his numerous relationships and the dynamics with his children. One of his daughters, Kimber, has shared conflicting sentiments about her relationship with her famous father. When she was initially trying to establish herself in the film industry, she approached her dad with her plans. At that point, Eastwood expressed a willingness to consider casting her in a future movie. Kimber mentioned that there were times when her father met her and they shared a strong bond. However, her narrative often took a different turn, indicating that it was challenging for her to connect with him. She lamented, I've begged and begged for a relationship, underscoring the complexities and challenges in her relationship with her father. In the 1990s, another woman, Lori Murray, made a surprising discovery. She had been adopted as a baby and had no knowledge of her biological parents until she initiated an investigation with the help of a professional. It was then that Murray learned that Clint Eastwood was her father. Eastwood, upon being contacted by Lori Murray, was welcoming and introduced her to the media at the 2004 Oscars. However, it's worth noting that, as per Patrick McGilligan's account, until Murray reached out to Eastwood, the actor had only suspected the possibility of having another child, but had never known for sure. Lori Murray's biological mother had sent her baby to an adoption center and listed Clint Eastwood as the biological father, adding another layer of complexity to Eastwood's family life. Clint Eastwood's many relationships and the diverse experiences of his children have undoubtedly contributed to the intricate and, at times, tumultuous nature of his family life. Beside, Clint Eastwood has experienced the challenges of fame and public scrutiny, particularly when it comes to his political opinions. While he has expressed his views on various political figures, he has also faced misunderstandings and false quotes that caused public backlash. In one instance, Eastwood faced heavy criticism from thousands of fans online who believed he had officially endorsed then-U.S. President Donald Trump. While he had made favorable comments about Trump in the past, he had not given an official endorsement. This led to confusion and public debate regarding his political stance. In 2019, Eastwood became the subject of a viral meme that falsely quoted him as endorsing Trump with the statement, I am endorsing Mr. Trump for president. However, Eastwood never made such a statement. In 2016, he did express a preference for Trump over Hillary Clinton, but ultimately chose not to endorse any candidate. In 2020, Eastwood shifted his support to Democratic hopeful Michael Bloomberg, stating, the best thing we could do is just get Mike Bloomberg in there. He also acknowledged supporting some of Trump's actions but disapproving of his behavior, particularly online. Clint Eastwood's foray into politics and his shifting opinions have made him a subject of public scrutiny, with his words and sentiments often being misconstrued and misrepresented in various contexts. In Patrick McGilligan's book, Clint, The Life and Legend, the author presented a less-than-flattering portrayal of Clint Eastwood, the iconic actor and filmmaker. According to McGilligan, Eastwood was depicted as someone who had an insatiable desire for control and was willing to take extreme measures to maintain that control. One prominent aspect of this portrayal was Eastwood's reputation for being a figure who would terminate contracts with employees if he believed they were undermining his authority. This image of Eastwood as a controlling and domineering figure was reinforced by statements attributed to individuals who had worked with him. One ex-producer, for example, was quoted as saying, If they ever called a meeting of all the people that Clint has screwed over, they'd have to hold it in the L.A. Coliseum. This statement suggests that there were numerous instances where Eastwood's actions or decisions had negatively impacted those around him. However. It's important to note that Eastwood himself vehemently disagreed with this assessment. In an interview with CBS News, when asked whether he sought to be in control all the time, he refuted the idea. Eastwood explained that he did not pursue total control because he genuinely appreciated the participation of everyone involved in his projects.
He cited his involvement as a producer and director in the film Million Dollar Baby and his contribution to the film's score as examples of his collaborative approach. In essence, while Patrick McGilligan's book painted Clint Eastwood as a highly controlling and authoritative figure, Eastwood himself denied this characterization, emphasizing his preference for collaboration and the involvement of all participants in his filmmaking endeavors. This divergence in perspectives highlights the complexity of Eastwood's personality and the varying opinions about his leadership style within the entertainment industry. Clint Eastwood's current life is said to be smoother. He owns many extremely valuable real estate. In the late 1960s, Clint Eastwood, while serving in the U.S. Army at Fort Ord, developed a keen interest in real estate in the Carmel area of California. This interest was fueled by his income from his burgeoning acting career. On December 24, 1967, he made a significant real estate investment by purchasing five parcels of land totaling 283 acres, 115 hectares, along Highway 1, near Malpaso Creek, just south of the picturesque Carmel Highlands. These parcels were acquired from Charles Sawyer, marking the beginning of Eastwood's venture into real estate in the region. In May 1968, Clint Eastwood and fellow actor James Garner jointly acquired 340 acres, 138 hectares, of wooded land in Carmel Valley. This land was purchased from the Howard Hattan estate, and the transaction amounted to $640,000. The property they acquired was situated across Carmel Valley Road from the Rancho Cañada Country Club and its associated golf course making it a valuable piece of real estate in a coveted location. What's particularly noteworthy is that Eastwood and Garner's involvement in real estate wasn't solely driven by personal gain. In November 1983, they made a generous and altruistic move by donating the undeveloped portion of their Carmel Valley property to the housing authority of the county of Monterey. This donation came with a stipulation specifying that some of the land should be designated for senior housing, highlighting their commitment to supporting the community and ensuring that the land served a meaningful purpose beyond private ownership. Clint Eastwood's foray into Carmel area real estate not only reflected his financial success, but also his desire to contribute positively to the community by providing land for senior housing thereby leaving a lasting impact on the region. Clint Eastwood also has made a significant mark in the world of real estate with several noteworthy property transactions. It all began when Eastwood founded his production company, Malpaso Productions, which was an essential part of his career. He acquired a sizable piece of land in the Highlands, totaling 650 acres. In 1995, he decided to sell the Malpaso land to Monterey County for $3.8 million. And, in doing so, he placed a permanent conservation easement on the property. This move demonstrated his commitment to preserving the natural beauty of the area. Using the proceeds from the Malpaso land sale, Eastwood invested in a 134-acre property known as the Odello Ranch situated at the mouth of the Carmel River. To protect his investments, which included the Mission Ranch Resort and the Mission Fields residential neighborhood, he paid to lower the levees along the southern side of the Carmel River, as both properties had been flooded in 1994. In 1997, Clint Eastwood, along with his former wife Maggie Johnson through the Eastwood Trust, generously donated 49 acres of the Odello Ranch property, along with associated water rights, to the Big Sur Land Trust. In 2016, Eastwood made another significant donation by contributing the remaining Odello East land. Moreover, he expanded his real estate holdings by purchasing 550 acres, known as the Canada Woods Development, which was located east of the Odello Ranch. Eastwood's real estate ventures were not limited to the Carmel area. In 2010, at the age of 80, he invested approximately $20 million in building a lavish 15,949-square-foot compound in Carmel-by-the-Sea. 
His California real estate portfolio also included a 6,136-square-foot Spanish-style mansion in Bel Air, a 1,067.5-acre property named the Rising River Ranch near Cassell, an apartment in Burbank, a 5,575-square-foot 5 desert modern home in La Quinta, and an additional house located next door to his primary Bel Air residence. Beyond California, Clint Eastwood extended his property ownership to other states. He possessed a 5,700-square-foot house in Sun Valley, Idaho, and a stunning 1.13-acre oceanfront manor in Kihei, Hawaii. The latter was featured in an episode of the reality show Mrs. Eastwood and Company in 2012. Throughout his life, Eastwood has lived in various residences, including homes in Studio City, Sherman Oaks, Tiburon, and Pebble Beach. Illustrating his multifaceted real estate investments and his commitment to preserving the environment in the Carmel area through conservation easements. What do you think about Clint Eastwood's tragic life and remarkable achievements? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.